All right, so this is the second half of section 1.3 in our intermediate algebra book. Um, we're writing the equations of a line. So this is part B. We're going to start with example 9 on page 35 if you're following along. And actually with these word problems, it is a good idea to get your book out and follow along because I'm not going to write the whole problem here. I'm going to read it to you. Anita calls a plumber because she's having problems with her kitchen sink. The plumber charges her a flat fee of $25. So we have a fee of $25 plus $12.50 per hour. All right, part A asks us to write a linear equation where y is the amount of money charged based on the amount of time x. So how much is Anita being charged? That's y. If you think about this, if you call a plumber and they charge you $25 flat fee just to roll up in your driveway and then $12.50 per hour, how much are you going to end up paying? Y is the total amount paid. I'm going to pay that plumber $12.50 per hour and since X is standing for the amount of time, it would be $12.50 times X plus flat fee of 25 and that's all that is writing the equation it's the total amount of money based on how many hours that plumber is there 1250 per hour plus the flat fee of 25 and then part B asks you how much will we need to pay the plumber if it takes him three hours to fix the problem well hours is X and Y is how much she's going to pay if we need to find out how much she's going to pay we have to substitute in how many hours. If the plumber is there for three hours, then the amount of money paid will be 1250 times three hours plus 25. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys can calculate this out. 1250 times three is 3750 plus 25 gives us a total amount of $62.50. Um, and don't forget to answer your questions in a complete sentence. Anita will pay $62.50 for three hours All right, example 10 is similar. It's on page 36. I'll read it to you. Alan and Doris are no longer happy with their cable provider. Their new provider, Cable Right, charges them $40 for a visit to their home. So that's the fee, $40 for the fee, plus $19 per hour to set up the service. It took the cable man two hours to set up, oh, two hours and 30 minutes, I'm sorry, two hours and 30 minutes to set up the cable. How much was charged for Alan and Doris's account? All right, let's write the equation first, just like we did before. The total amount of money will be the amount charged per hour, and that's this, 19 and X represents the number of hours plus the one time fee of 40. Now to find out how much we need, we're going to be charged for two hours and 30 minutes. We need to put that in here for X, but we're not going to put two, 230, two hours and 30 minutes in hours would be two and a half. So we're going to substitute two and a half. And of course you can use decimals when we're talking about time. 2.5. When you simplify this all out, 19 times 2.5 is 47.5 plus 40 would be 87.5. Uh, answer this in a complete sentence. How much, the question was how much was charged to Alan and Doris's account? 
So in a complete sentence, Alan and Doris were charged. Don't forget your dollar sign. It's not 87.5, it's 87.50 because that's the format that we write dollars and cents. Okay, example 11, also on page 36, says, It has been shown that having a student leader in the classroom helps students succeed. At Valencia College in 2006, in 2006, 42 sections or classes had student leaders. In 2008, 226 sections had supplemental learning leaders. This shows that the program has experienced a tremendous growth. Use the given data to find the equation of the line that predicts the future growth of the program. All right, to find the equation of the line, you have to have a slope and a point, okay? Well, we can make these pieces of data into points. We used this in one of the le previous lessons. These points are easy to write. We'll use the years for x, and the number of sections for y. And those will be the points. And it doesn't matter which one we use when we get ready to write the equation, but we do have two points. Now, what we don't have is a slope. So we'll use those two points and the slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to give us a slope because we cannot write the equation of a line without a slope. So y2 minus y1 and if you look over here, these will be x, x1, x2, y1, y2. So y2 minus y1 will be 226 minus 42. x2 minus x1 will be 2008 minus 2006. And that comes out to be 184 over 2, which is 92. So we have a slope of 92. We're going to fit that into the point slope formula now, since we're trying to write the equation of a line. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And like I said before in the previous video, it doesn't matter which one of these you use for x1 and y1, you're going to get the same answer either way. I'm going to use this top one because it has lower numbers. They're easier to work with. And this will be m, so this will be x1 and y1. And I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here, and I'm going to I'm going to fit them in as y minus 42 equals there's the m 92 x minus 2006. We're going to distribute simplify y minus 42 equals 92x minus this comes out to be 184,000. 552. You can get your calculator out to check that if you want. Still simplifying. The next step is to add this 42 to isolate y. And these are the like terms over here. So we end up with y equals 92x. Uh, you got to be careful with this. These are different signs. So you actually have to subtract the 42 from this, and we're going to keep the sign of the bigger one, which would be the negative sign. So it's 184,510. And this is the equation of the line. All right, example 12 on page 37 says, in a certain university, the number of students who majored in statistics in 1990 was 350. By 2005, only 50 students majored in statistics find an equation of the line. All right, again, to write the equation of the line, we have to have a slope. So we're going to turn these into ordered pairs. 
and we're going to use the slope formula to find the slope. Slope formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. x1, x2, y1, y2. And that's going to turn into 50 minus 350 over 2005 minus 1990. 50 minus 350 is negative 300. 2005 minus 1990 is 15. Uh, when we reduce that, it becomes negative 20. So there's our slope for our line right there, negative 20. Then we're going to use the point slope formula. It's going to be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Um, and you can use either one of these for x1 and y. I actually think I'm going to use this bottom one because these numbers are a little bit easier than these numbers. So this is going to be x1 and y1 to substitute in here. And this is m, remember, from the slope formula. So that negative 20 is going to go there. All right, so y minus y1 will be y minus 50. m was negative 20. x minus x1 will be x minus 2005. Simplify, distribute here. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So we have y minus 50 equals negative 20x plus sign here because we have a negative times a negative. 20 times 2005, you get your calculator out, you can check this, it's 40,100. Then we need to isolate this y, so we're going to add 50. And this is the like term down here. So y equals negative 20x. Uh, these are same signs, so this is going to be plus 40,150. And this is your final equation here. All right, looks like that's it for section 1.3. You got some homework following. Um, bring your questions to class. I'll see you then.